Yo, 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 how's it going, y'all? So, we already know the servers are down as I, as the making of this video. Let me fix this goddamn monitor. Brand new content, Alliance, in the quick match and rank mode below the Osro rank. When teammates leave the battle early in a multiplayer team, the last remaining players may use the Alliance tag in the bag page to join forces with other players if requirements are met. The player initiating Alliance will form a new team with other players for that match. Thank God the lord like i i don't know if y'all have seen one of my, my recent video of watching the preview of things but come tomorrow bro we are mm, i'm ready hyped let's go so the requirements are for the alliance is spend 7500 dark tide coins the alliance must be initiated before the fifth shadow corruption starts in the match each player can initiate at most one alliance per match each match can only have a certain number of alliances. The alliance feature is disabled when fewer than four teams are left in the match. That means we can't try to cheese it, but you know, there's always a glitch of some minute to where you can kind of cheese it and all that good stuff. But you, you know, we'll figure that out though when the time comes, y'all. When you are in the realm of Yang, the alliance process will be paused. When the realm of Yang ends, it will resume. When when an alliance is completed, you will exit the ultimate state if you are in one when the alliance is activated. I mean, the exit, yeah, you will exit the ultimate state. Okay, okay, sorry, sorry, sorry. When you successfully activate an alliance, you, any active bounty protection and violent and challenge quest relating to you or your alliance members will be canceled. So that means if you're getting targeted or if you, you know, you're trying to get targeted to bait people to come towards you, that will be gone. The current version allows alliance up to two heroes. So, hey, we, we in there, y'all. We, we finna be, woo. I ain't even gonna lie, I'm excited. So, I'm very excited. Excited. We got a new event, uh, Panda, Righteous Purge, Alchemy Trials. Let's see, Fairyland, Pink, Pink Lie Adjustment, Sky High Racing Updates, Mission and Rewards Adjustments. Honestly, I, I wanna know some of your guys' thoughts. Do y'all really enjoy the Fairyland, Pink Lie stuff? Like, I don't really like try the kite stuff and everything, and I see a lot of people that go for those time limits and everything, but let me know in the comments if y'all actually enjoy those, though. A uh, new preview feature, Change Scenery. And a feature has been added while previewing outfits, accessories, faces, hairstyles, range weapon skins, and melee weapon skins. Change scenery. scenery. This will allow players to switch between default morning, midday, dusk, or night. That's actually awesome. That's, that's actually kind of great. Uh, we have PlayStation Challenges coming back. We have PlayStation. Wait, Challenge... Oh wait, challenge the wind in this race PlayStation. Oh, that's for the Sky Racing number seven. Okay, that's on PlayStation. Yay, PlayStation. I'm sorry. Uh, PlayStation tournaments number ten is back in full of effect. We got all that good stuff for y'all. Uh, Aurora season pack most definitely coming on back. We got the Aurora new season will end on September 24th. Mmm. Okay, they oh no, Aeon, Aeon season. That's tomorrow, guys. Tomorrow coming coming right up when the server. The server is from six it, obviously about a good fifty minutes ago to eleven o'clock tonight. Eleven o'clock tonight is when the new season does start. Hero adjustments, Valasui. Adjustments to the skill water trap. It can be ch charged by holding the button after a successful charge. Releasing the button will set multiple water bombs with the shorter binding duration. The large water bomb in the center can bind enemies for 1.1 second. And the small water bombs around it can bind enemies for 0.5 seconds. Adjusted the water bombs generated by water trap. Water trap Trinity to bind enemies in gold focus state unless it's skill based. Adjustments. Adjust the duration of Rising Tide and change in duo trio modes from 20 seconds to 25 seconds and solo mode from 15 seconds to 18 seconds. The damage multiplier of the Water Spear hit has been adjusted from 0.1 to 1 point. Enemies bound by Dragon's Coil will no longer break free when hit by a grappling hook. Remove the skill variant Water Trap Array and remove the ultimate variant Rising Tide Barrage. Ooh. Now, hey. Most definitely going to be having a new guide out for Valda when she changes come either. I might end up doing some tonight. We'll see how it goes, though. Varia, the adjustments to the ultimate mech mayhem. While in the bronze mech state, clicking the ultimate button again will expand the bronze mech shield, providing a 20%, 25% damage reduction effect to a nearby atmosphere for four seconds. 
E. Let's go. Slightly reduced the base durability of Bronze Mech to match that of Mech. Mech Mayhem Copilot. All Bronze Mech Ultimate variants now allow double jumping and the purifying effect that comes with cannon mode has been changed from a two second delay to an immediate effect. Adjusted the ability of gunplay aimed to break gold focus on lets the skill base to slightly increase the hitbox of the bullets. Let's go. Optimize the beacon interaction of Mech Mayhem Copilot. Now, even if a player is interrupted during the frustration process after using the beacon, Faria will no longer lose her remaining rage and the beacon will not disappear. That's actually kind of fire. I like that little change that they've done. Remove the skill variant gunplay scatter shot. Low key, scatter shot was good though. Like, why even get away? Why even remove that and remove the ultimate variant mech mayhem restore? See, scatter shot. To be honest, was a gr I felt as if it was a great skill because you, it was a good combo getter. But, but that's just my personal opinion, to be honest. Like, everybody else does play different. They, they do these skill changes and stuff based off on how people play it and which skills are being used mostly. This is why they do these changes. So, for Zai, they adjusted the duration of the Flame Ward state for the flame ward skill from 2 seconds to 3.5 seconds. Optimize the hit duration of skill flame ward firestorm and slightly increase the attack range of the explosion. For the special vertical strike charge move chain link of the ultimate chain scythe adjusted the casting direction of the aiming direction of the crosshair shortened the startup frames and optimized the attack range and knockback effect. Remove the skill variant flame ward ignition. Remove the ultimate variant chain scythe afflict. He chain losing chain scythe afflict. I mean, that was actually a pretty decent alt too. But again, I mean, I would know. I don't really necessarily play Zai a lot, but like, I feel like, hey, it's okay. Alcos who adjusted the damage of three consecutive tiger lunging strikes of the ultimate feral frenzy from. 2.4, 2.7, 3, 2, those numbers right there. We're not even going to get into this, guys. It slightly increased the stun duration of these strikes inflict on Vajra. <gasps> Excuse me. The Bronze Mech and the Ultimate General. I'm going to have to cut that part out. <laughs> Liam Liu adjusted the flight distance of Aurora Core and the Ultimate Metal Fusion Core from 25 millimeters to 22 millimeters. I could have sworn they already had changed that, though, but I could be wrong. Adjusted the knockback effects. So Suffered by players grabbed by the Aurora, Aurora when they are ultimately released and the fly to the fort at this point, they will now fall faster after being knocked back. Hmm. Increase the duration of the immunity granted after emerging from an Aurora core from 3 seconds to 5 seconds. Okay. Kurumi adjusts the damage reduction for the link target and Kurumi of her vertical strike moves from 90% to 70% while healing rate defense connection lasts. Okay, okay, that's kind of decent for the character adjustments. Okay, let's see what we got for weapon adjustments. The unified adjustment for melee weapons. The range used to determine if a counter is successful or not has been expanded to 360 degrees. Let's go. We get to defend our backs now. So get them. Ah, uh -uh, that parry. Ah, uh -uh, stop playing with me. Stop, stop playing, bro. Them parries is finna be nice. All right, fist blades. Slightly reduced the stagger time with the crouching horizontal strike hits. Enemies delayed the timing at which attacks can be followed up after releasing charge moves. Perfect, because I literally was getting chained. Like, I was getting cheesed the hell out of somebody recently with the fist blades. And I'm like, what? I'm like, bro, like, what the heck? What the heck is going on? Like, but, okay. Spear, reworked the charge horizontal strike. So increased the knockback height caused the hitting enemies. With the uppercut slash move slightly reduce the movement of the horizontal strikes while sprinting. Dual wield dual wielded weapons optimize the pre-input for transitioning from horizontal strikes to crouching. Okay, katana adjusted the horizontal strike. Thunder strike move from focused attack to a common attack and can now be charged reduce the damage multiplier from 2.83 to 1.33. Mm, that's nice. Increase the damage multiplier for the first stage of the charge vertical strike from 1.17 times four to 1.26 times four okay the the decision making of the katana's blink strike has become a bit too montaneous mono monotonous you know what sorry so we've adjusted the horizontal strike thunder strike move to a common attack to add more branches to the katana's decision making okay cool 
Now we got the Honk Sword. Reduce the damage multiplied for the first stage of the vertical strike from 2.47 times 2 to 2.35 times 2. Okay, that's a, that's a decent little nerf. I gotcha. Soul Jade adjustments. Fist, bl fist Blade Soul Jades. Increase the new Soul Jade Sky Punch. Oh, no. Introduce the no new Soul Jade Sky Punch. Introduce the new Soul Jade Tempest Kick. Reduce the damage multiplied of Cloud Weaver from them numbers to them numbers. So, not getting into this guy. Spear Soul Jade. The last hit of martial art. Hex of Harmony Spear can now be charged to another direction. Perfect. Honk Sword Soul Jade. To Greatly reduce the duration of the silent effect caused by hitting enemies with the fist with the first hit of a royal burst. Reduce the damage multiplier of a royal burst from them numbers to them numbers. Dual halberd soldiers reduce the damage multiplier of martial martial art wheel form hook from them numbers to them numbers and increase the recovery multiplier of the last hit from 1.6 to 2.2. It's not that many numbers, so I'm gonna hang. I'm gonna say them numbers. Reduce the damage multiplier of dreadful whale. From them numbers to them numbers. <laughs> Katana Soul Jades. For Soul Slash Light, increase the number of hits and attack duration. Reduce the knockback distance and knock up height caused by hitting enemies. Increase by the damage multiplier of the horizontal strikes from 0.73 times 8 to 0.56 times 11. And adjust the damage multiplier of the vertical strikes from 73 times 8 to 0.58 times 10. And do introduce the new Soul J Swift Cut. Currently, Soul Slash cards is knocked back too frequently when hitting enemies, making it in inconvenient for teammates to cooperate in team play. Therefore, we've optimized the knockback knock distance and knock up height caused by Soul Slash when hitting enemies, granted potential for better benefits through in team cooperation. That's actually pretty decent. I like how they're. They're, they're switching it up. They're, they're giving us a good, decent change. Okay, in-game adjustments. Let's see. Combat item adjustments. Players hit by the White Tiger's powers. War now gain a two-second immunity roar effect. Optimize the Draco Storm now restores a certain amount of health, armor, and rage. Hmm. Okay, Immortal War adjustment. The Spirit Well now features Divine Beast powers to the third round, just like in the fourth round. And duration of the buffs gained from capturing Spirit Wells in the third and fourth rounds have been adjusted to 120 seconds. After a Spirit Well spawns, it will only persist for 108, 180 seconds. If not captured within that time, it will disappear. Slightly adjusted the respawning times of Spirit Wells. That's actually, that's actually pretty cool. In rank number three, in rank... Quick match duos and trios, the cost of rebirth charms have been reduced from 9,000 to 7,500. Okie doke. Out game adjustments. Let's see. Free training. Adjusted the fist blades and relevant soul jades. Blah, 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 blah. Um, to be honest, uh, the out game adjustments, that we got profiles, justice, the journey's dawn, hero score changes, hot potato. Um, is there a lot for... Or there's actually really not a lot, so we're gonna do the showdown adjustments. Showdown event level suffer no demon. Event duration is from September 25th to October 9th, which means it's gonna be literally two days after the fact. So let's see, let's see what they have added. We got the Enigma Peak made available. Okay, combat adjustments. Optimize the AR for the coordinated attacks between different types of monsters. Optimize the move transitions of Omnia's Ball and added new combos. Optimized the move transitions of Veneer, Venemir and optimized the knockback distance caused by some moves. Narita's Rain adjustments. Reduce the attack of monsters in solo mode on Night Scream and Legend difficulties. Change the repurpose encounter in Narita Codex to discarding two anima rings to obtain one new anima ring. Increase the probability of obtaining higher quality or higher level anima rings and encounters new beginnings. Only the strong and the repurpose. Adjust the logic for the appearance of Thundercall Charm and Everance replated options in the Nariti Codex increase the probability of useless rocks appearing. A small amount of Dark Tide coins can now be obtained when giving up the secret anime yielded by certain Nariti Codex. Er eradicating the evil and strike it rich of the Nariti Codex will no longer appear in the 13th area. Slightly adjusted the spawn locations of the Nariti Codex in the shop area. Increase the frostbite added when frostbite blessing two triggers in ice blast from 200 to 350 points induced the new enema ring slightly counter heal and diffuse heal elements 
heal Aegis Break Assault, Dampen Damage Reduction, adjusted the burn damage caused by Hydro Flare Blessing. Melee attacks from 30% per second to 75% per second. Adjusted the burn damage inflicted on enemies by Hydro Flare Scorch Cloud Weapon Strike from 13, 20, 26. 39% to 25%, 57.5% per second by level. You know, I should have just left it doing what I was doing originally. Adjusted the burn damage inflicted on enemies by wildfire from 33%. You know what? We're not doing this from them numbers per second to them numbers per second by level. The burn damage dealt per second to enemies by fiery blades caused by level one and level two diffuse flame blade has been adjusted from them numbers of your attack to them numbers of your attack level three has remained unchanged the duration of all levels burn effect have been reduced from 18 seconds to 10 seconds hero adjustments change Kurumi's horizontal strike from the thunder strike to a horizontal strike furniture after she resolves an attack by diffuse solve Move the forward the timing at which Yushan's martial skill lightning hooves can be dodged and interrupted. Function adjustment. Added states current and other in the equipped soldier's page and the hero name who has been who has the soldier equipped will be displayed in the tips of that soldier consistent with the display when selecting the bonus soldier of the soldier bonus page. Added the feature of the deconstruct an individual soldier to added a deconstruct option to dial that appears when clicking on a soldier. That's perfect. Then we have our usual store updates, bug fixes. They fixed the issue with Soyo Way skill shield bash rush sometimes could not hit enemies. Battle related bugs fixed the issue with the actual stats that the anima rings enhanced thunderbolt and hydro flare enhancement did not match their descriptions. PlayStation optimizations optimized rendering related memory usage. And that was actually a lot. God damn, to be honest, that was. But uh, I want to know. How do you guys feel about this update? How do y'all feel about... Uh, actually, I'm surprised they didn't say anything about the new character. Huh. We're gonna, I'm gonna check out some test servers, you know. They didn't really say anything about the new character. Now that I think about it, I was just reading it. And they just had the season preview and stuff, too. So, then the Witcher and stuff comes out. You know, I'm I'm pretty hyped. I'm pretty hyped about how this how this season is how this new season is gonna go. I'm gonna get back in my bag of streaming and everything. But I want to know your guys' thoughts on how you guys felt about this update and how do you guys feel on how so far these adjustments is they've made. Like, do you think there could be other changes and stuff? How are you guys locking the new showdown? Um, I actually, I'm still working on the showdown video. Uh, if got anybody does want to join me, do let me know, and you know we can get together and work some stuff out. But let me know how you guys feel. You guys have a good one. Peace, love, tranquility. Don't let nothing get you guys down. And may the Lord forever, forever, forever. Be in your guys' favor.